Hi, I'd like to show you how you can create an animated GIF using rotoscoping. And it's a multi-step thing, but we're going to try to do this inside of Adobe Animate. And this will give you an idea of the, an overview of how it should go and how it should come together. So here we go. First of all, I've already prepared a video segment. The first stage is to prepare some video that you can animate over. And I've already done that. And I have to uh, prepare, after I've shot that footage, I have to prepare it by trimming it down and resizing it. And I found a really useful tool for that is to use something called e easygif.com. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to use its video cutter functions to go choose that file. So I shot this using just a cell phone. And I'm going to load it up. This is actually shot many years ago. You have to upload it to the site. And once it's there, it lets you preview it. But we will, we're going to pay particular attention to when we want to start and stop the animation more or less. I'm going to turn off the audio because we're not going to need that. And right about... Here is where I'm going to get it started. Looks like that's around five seconds. And I'm going to watch and see when it's just about done. And it's done just about, whoops, well, just about there. Looks like eight seconds. So I'm going to go from five to nine seconds. And it asks you right here, let's put in five. And let's go to nine. Let's go to nine and hit cut video. And this is doing this online. This has been a really, really powerful website for doing this sort of stuff roll down below because you don't realize it's already done the job and there is my finished video now it's been trimmed so I've gotten rid of a bunch of the beginning a bunch of the end we want to use as little as we can but next we want to resize it so I'm going to hit the resize option and the best height I found to use is 480 pixels we'll leave the width blank it'll automatically figure that out I'm going to change the format to an mp4 in the process I'll hit resize video and it'll take a few seconds and it'll prepare that for us too. Oh, and there's the resized video, already done. It says it's four seconds long, so I'm going to now save it and I'll put it in a project file. I'll make a new folder for this called test three and I'll save it in there. Doesn't matter what the name of it is. Our next step is to go to Adobe Animate and we're gonna start using it there. So here we go. In Adobe Animate, we're going to create a new project. We're going to size this thing to 450 by 450 pixels. That's a pretty good size for an, anime, uh, for an, an avatar. And we're going to use 24 frames per second as our frame rate. Although that might not match the video, it's okay. It's pretty forgiving when it's, an, when it's a rotoscope. So our next step, we have to import that prepared video. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Import, and I'm going to look for Import Video. There's a number of settings we have to get right here. First of all, we would like to embed it as a H.264 video. We have to browse for it. And it must be, oh, not that one. It was in the test three. Great, there's my, my file. Everything else is good here, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and say next. I'd like to place it on the stage, sure. Expand the timeline if needed, sure. Include audio, no, I don't need that. So I'll say, oh, and I want to change something else. The symbol type, let's make it a graphic. Then I'll hit next. After importing video, view video topics. No, I don't need that. So I'm just going to hit finish. And there is my reference graphic. And I'm actually going to go up here and I'm going to call it ref for using references in Adobe Animate. Now I can see the stage size here. This is the lovely thing about this right now is I can change how this is looking. I can reframe this thing. Maybe I'll shrink the stage a little so we can really see what's going on. And I want to get this framed about right. And you know what? I might as well, I'll hit the Q button to free transform. And I'm going to make this thing a little bigger by holding the, up, holding the shift key. I realize the reference point is here. I'm going to put the reference point right on the nose and kind of center this so I can expand it out and try to fill the frame with the animation. Because if this is really an avatar, I want it to sort of fill that square. Right about there. Looks like it's going to be pretty good. Now, this reference layer is not very long, so I'm going to kind of scan it out there. It was about four seconds long, so I'll go to about five seconds about here. Hit F5, expand that on, and I can scrub in here to see where it starts and where it finishes. And it looks like it's actually starting a little early. So I should try to finish just before the, the next cycle of that same place. I'll kind of keep coming along here. And it looks like it could be right about there. So I'd like to trim this back. I will highlight and trim back to about that frame. That was about frame 100. And I'm going to hit Shift F5 to trim that back. So if I were to test this, if I wanted to see what this would look like, 
Let's see if I test this movie. Uh, and animate, sure. And warning, it uses a feature that's not supported. Okay, well then I won't be doing that. I wonder if I can test it another way. I wonder if I went to control and if I set it so I would loop playback and control and I hit play, if it'll more or less show me how the, the image is going to look. Yeah, pretty decent as a seamless loop. And that's the idea. If you can make a seamless loop, it's even better. So I'm going to stop playing now. Thank you. And now we're on to the next phase. So I'll double click the hand, the hand tool, zoom in on it. And now we have got this thing just about ready to go. But now's the point where I'm going to lock this layer. Or am I? Oh yes, I have to use the selection tool to lock it for some reason these days. I'll put a new layer on top. This is where I'm going to start to draw. And now the secret of this thing is you don't have to draw every frame. In fact, what you might want to do is choose specific keyframes and just draw those points. Now the first keyframe is right at the beginning and a keyframe actually has a little circle on it. So I'm going to start drawing with the brush tool. I've got black. I'm going to see if I can find the right size of brush here and you know what? I might even want to zoom in a little bit so that the brush is relatively bigger. And by all means, max out the size of the screen so that you can see everything that you need to. So if I were looking here yeah, to draw this, see, I could draw, yeah, here's, give myself a pupil. My suggestion for this is draw the shadows. Don't try to draw a nose. Draw the shadows inside and around the nose. And it doesn't have to be stellar artwork. It just has to sort of match. The real secret to rotoscoping is the fluidity and accuracy of that motion is going to be what makes this thing looks good. It's not about the quality of the animation. Now, I could spend a long time and try to do a really good job, but what I would have to do is get you know, facial hair in there. I certainly want to find things that have shadow. And if I didn't have shadow, if, for instance, you know, the lip didn't actually all go the way through there. I'm not going to draw around the lips. I'm just going to draw sort of the shadow underneath the lip. Keep in mind as well, you can always go and use the fill tool and fill in things later like this. And although this looks pretty strange right now, it's going to come out and it's going to work pretty pretty well by the time it's done. For hair, you don't even have to draw your whole head. Just draw the shadowy parts. And again, I'm kind of doing a real rough version of this. It's a good idea to get to know the shortcuts. The fill tool, for instance, is K. So if I could just hit K and fill that in, that's better. And I suspect hitting B will take me back to my brush. I can roll my wheel mouse up and down to try to get the areas that I need. And again, this is weird, but I'm, what I'm drawing is the shadowy areas, not necessarily drawing distinctive features like a collar or anything like that. Rather, the shadow's in there. So having done that, let's say that this frame is done. I'm going to go about five frames over to draw the next keyframe. I'm going to draw here in that layer. I've locked the reference. I want to make sure I'm in the right layer. To make a new keyframe, I'll hit F7. It'll erase the stuff there. It's not really erased. It's just back in the last keyframe. And I'll alternate between my brush and my fill again. So with my brush, I'll start drawing where things relatively are here. And again, I'm not going to work too hard on this demo. I don't want this thing to be too long. But I think you'll get the idea of it soon enough. Just putting up key features how much time you spend is up to you. I hope that, that it'll become a labor of love, but it is very time intensive. And my suggestion is don't put up to put in too much time all up, up front. You can always add more detail, more temporal detail later on. And I'm alternating with K and B to get those things in there. And just kinda giving an indication of where there are key points in the character. Something like that. Okay, so I've got two keyframes up there. Now, you can see it's just relative. Oh, by the way, people look really strange if you don't give them eyebrows. And if your character has eyebrows, make sure you make them recognizable by putting them back in. Good enough. Okay, so I would continue doing this and I would go every four, every fifth frame or so, hit F7 and do it again. Now, if you manage to get all the way through the complete rotation, you take a look at it, see how it plays. Um, as an example of that, you know, I can turn off the reference layer and see what it's looking like and you get the idea of what we've got. We've got something fairly recognizable that's going to start rotating around. Much more detail could be put in, but 
you do what you got to do. And um, by the time it's time to export this thing, turn off that reference layer, go to File, go to Export, and export it as an animated GIF. And with that preview, hopefully we can see that it doesn't show the reference layer. All we have is the animation. And if things go well, you should get something, I hope, that will look something like this guy up here. Like I say, labor of love. Um, get creative with what the motion is and then start filling in the details as it goes and see how far it takes you. I'm going to cut it off there. Hope that's enough to get you going. Good luck and do read through all of the references and things that will give you clues on what you can do to optimize it. I also suggest do a test run first before you commit to a big project. Good luck.